Since the beginning of this year, the Eritrean separatists in the north have been scoring major victories over Mengistu. But has the high casualty rate and the crippling cost had any effect on him? How long are you willing to send young Ethiopians, the future of this country, to the war in the north to be killed or named? In the first place, it is that I wish to send even a single individual to the north. And we don't want the war either. We did not start it. We have inherited a very noble value from our forefathers, and that is the national identity of the country. So if there is a challenge against this supreme value, we have no alternative but to defend ourselves. The province of Eritrea stretches along the entire Red Sea coast, and without it, Ethiopia would be landlocked. The key port of Massawa was taken by the rebels in February, a major loss that also marked the end of a nine-month ceasefire. In the fighting that followed, thousands died. The Ethiopian army says 3,000 were killed. The rebels claim ten times that number. Mengistu says he's not prepared to make any concessions on Ethiopian unity, whatever the price. There is no authority in Ethiopia, no leadership most certainly, which has the mandate to allow the emergence of an independent state carved off from Ethiopia. Whatever they sacrifice, we are ready to pay. Even if it means another 30 years of war? Even if it continues for 100 years. Are we to sign away the fate of our country? Is this generation, which is fully committed to the establishment of a just, democratic and united Ethiopia, to sit over the disintegration of a country whose existence has been defended for millennia against all kinds of regional expansionists and European colonialists? Supposing these rebels manage to capture the city of Asmara, and declare independence. Well, that does not mean that the war has come to an end. Never. It will never come to an end. If they have this illusion, they are fighting for the unending and interminable extermination of the people. Abandoned by the Soviets, Mengistu seeks new friends. Top of his list, the Israelis. Both have a common enemy. They believe Arab states are backing the Eritrean rebels. At issue is control of the strategically vital Red Sea. Our relation with Israel is not with the hope that Israel will replace the Soviet Union as an ally of Ethiopia. I do not expect that a treaty of friendship and cooperation between us and the Soviet Union would come to an end. And I do not believe that the government of the Soviet Union will do this. Is Israel helping in the development of your arms industry? Our relation with Israel is not a military relationship. And let's not forget, this technology is not exclusive to the Soviet Union and Israel. I mean, you can buy the technology from anywhere as long as you have the money. So where are you buying them from? from the east or the west. We buy the technology from whoever is ready to sell it because it is for defense purposes. President Mengistu has promised there will also be major political reforms. Will you allow parties with opposing views to yours to operate freely within the country? We are party, the Ethiopian People's Democratic Unity Party, and as such, we cannot decide, have no mandate on the making of other parties in our country. If it is in the interest of the unity of the people, there is no reason why other parties should not come to existence in this country. We decide on our future order as a party, and it is not our intention to retain the monopoly of power to be the only party. But it is the people, through the national parliament, Schengel, who will decide whether or not there will be other parties in Ethiopia. But as far as we are concerned, we will be willing to work with other parties here.
So perhaps within two years, we could see a multi-party democracy with candidates with opposing views to yours standing for election. But yes, well, yes, it is quite possible, so long as the national shango decides yes. Twelve months ago, opposition to Mengistu was in the form of a military coup. Eleven generals tried to unseat him. Now they're standing trial for their lives. These are the first pictures of their court-martial. Their open and fair trial helps make Mengistu's case to the world that the rule of law, and not the gun, now reigns in Ethiopia. It's alleged that you killed 12,000 people to gain power and retain power. Is that true? Of course, this is absurd. I mean, in the first place, it is not in my nature to kill even an insect or a small living thing, let alone human beings. If anyone perished during the planting of the revolution, it was certainly not on my orders. I did not single out any individual to be killed. This outrages my sense of humanity. How is it imaginable that I ordered the annihilation of 12,000 people? You have very kindly offered to show us the conditions in which political prisoners are kept. Would you extend that invitation to representatives of Amnesty International? We have invited them in the past. They have come and visited our prison system, and I renew this invitation any time. We have nothing to hide. The country's most famous political prisoners now live modestly on the outskirts of Addis Ababa. These 11 members of Haile Selassie's royal dynasty have served a total of 152 years in Mengistu's jails. They've been released over the past 24 months, but are still not allowed to travel abroad. Could each of you just tell me how long you've been in prison? 15 years. 14 years. 14 years. 14 years. 14 years. 15 years. For 14 years. 14 years. For nine years. For 15 years. 14 years. 